You're watching SEC Softball, presented by T-Mobile 5G Internet. Today in Oxford, South Carolina will go for their first SEC road sweep since 2013. Standing in their way, the Ole Miss Rebels, who have won game three in two of their first three SEC series. But, uh, Bev Smith probably <laughs> likes it, as long as, she, yeah. long as she doesn't get hurt. But it's happened 13 times this year. This is hit to De Leon at second base for out number one. And those are always the teams that come out on top. Swings through it. Nice pitch there from Caitlin Riley for strikeout number one. Tallahassee region final. Get hard through the 3-4 hole for a two-out base hit for Denver Bryant. Second to McKinney Cleithermas this season. Saw Cleithermas yesterday in game two, went four innings, gave up five hits and four earned runs as that's back-to-back -back base runner. Two home runs yesterday. Swing and first pitch, up the middle, base hit. Around comes Bryant to the plate, it's close and they got her. The throw was on the money. And these are so close. And Denver Bryant, actually, Chucky's the one that initiated the replay review. She puts her hands South to her Carolina head and looks at the head nine. coach. The call on the field is upheld. Out. For the game guy to the top of the first. Is Different beast in the athlete as far as just the adrenaline, tough competition. Nice swing there from Lassiter to push that one into right field. Lead off single for Jayla Lassiter, who is good seniors. You're seeing that happen a lot more. Strikeout number one for Jory Hurd as she gets pwned. Percentage, but it's actually Jory Hurd. 62.5% of the time she's getting the ground balls to the infield. That was dropped, but they get a force. It's with just 22, and 10 of them belong to Brady, who puts a charge into one to the warning track. And it's caught out there by Blampede. Lead off single, comes to nothing. And it was a one and one and done. One year, that's all I can handle. I think we need some, uh, we need some photo proof of that. <laughs> Slow roller star transfer from Syracuse takes care of it for out number one. That can go, and she said, they just don't have any consistent patterns. It's tough to plan for who's gonna be in the circle as an offense. And that's kind of what you're starting to see. Elena Vodder went the distance, ended up beating Clemson for the first time in the history of the program. Big statement for Vodder. The transfers, the runner goes, and Bree Warren, three for three on the year, stealing bases. 2-2 two, two for Sellers, swings through it big out there for Caitlin Riley. She tends to have on these 3-2 counts. Hitting an RBI in game one, ground ball left side. That'll do it for Caitlin Riley and company. Riley's gone. It's College World Series last year, so Vodder has that experience. Smoked up the middle by Ansley Furbush, her third hit of the series. That's the second straight inning with a leadoff base. So big for Ole Miss and the excitement for the coaches and for that team. And Jamie Traxel said, someone's going to give LSU their first loss of the season. Why not us? And that gets away. And Malvin, the pinch runner, moves up to second base in scoring position with nobody out. This year that she's put into play. So that's a pitch she can time up well. It's some on that one, and the flip to second. It's a double play. Blankenship coming up big for the Gamecocks. Down one, two. Having her best hitting season as far as average goes since her sophomore year at Illinois. Lifts this one out to Blampede in center. For the Rebels in the bottom. Wait, too much over the heart of the plate, but that at least got a little bit of a sniff by Jen Cummings, which now kind of opens up some doors. That goes off the wrist, it looked like, of Cummings. So she's aboard with nobody out swinging in the first inning. Not small ball there, driven to left field, and that's going over the wall. 
and I think it came out of the glove of the left fielder. It's Taylor Malvin out there. I think it's a gift for Blampede. And Blampede, she turns on this pitch up in the zone. I thought for sure this was going to be a no doubter. Malvin tracks it, now but the third baseman, number 13, you can so just tell the hurt that she feels in this type of situation, right? Never intentional, but at times this piece happens, but sometimes the ones that it gets by or something happens, it can hurt you. Uh, runners can get a couple extra bases. Off the glove there of Riley. That's gonna be an infield single for Zoe Leno. Just her fifth hit of the season. When the count is 3-2, and I find that to be so interesting. Swings through it. Lopez, a big time strikeout for out number one. Teams that are top three in the SEC and how often they utilize that. Throw down, and that is well in time to get the runner, Zoe Leno. Number of them down the left field line. Ninth pitch of the at bat coming. Another 2-2. Gonzalez gets into this to left center field and gone. A two run shot for Marissa Gonzalez, her first home run of the season, doubles South Carolina's lead. And it's on the off speed, just elevated, staying up in the zone. She's able to turn on it, not fooled by this pitch at all. If you're Marissa Gonzalez, those are the types of hits that really just get you fired up. A rule is that ball has to leave. The runner cannot leave before the ball has left her hand. You see the ball and the foot off the base. Listen, there was a play in the South Carolina Clemson game where I thought the runner review, left the early. the field has been changed. The runner left early, that's the third out. Take the runs off the board. Wow. That. Elena Vauder at times really wasn't with Nyjah Kennedy, but. Gets through on the right side for Angelina De Leon. Who hits the change up well and who doesn't? Because the ones that don't, you best believe I'm coming in hot with the change more times than not because you struggle with it. There it is. Vauder didn't get the call on the last pitch and wanted it, but gets it there for out number one. Can't do a whole lot with. So it's really being able to execute a pitch that you can do some damage with. And that's really what it comes down to, right? When you step into the box. Junior from Hope Mills, North Carolina. To the right side, there is Sellers. And that'll do it for the bottom of the third. To the fourth inning we go. Gamecocks up two. I'm a little bit from everything that was going South Carolina's way to, uh, nope, let's go, we're in the dugout. And it's Marissa Gonzalez who leads this inning off, who hit the home run. And now De Leon takes care of that at second. Blitz. First base coach, I'm going back to back to back. Change ups here. Got her. 53 miles per hour. Out. Be on time for the soft, but don't let that hard get by you and miss on a pitch that you can do something with. This is crushed to center field, but right at the center fielder, Lassiter. Ole Miss keeps it there as we go to the bottom of the fourth and find a way. And that feels like what Ole Miss has to do right now against Vodder. Well, especially when you're in the grind of conference play, because every weekend is an absolute dogfight. So I, I think on top of get 50 years that are on board some of these teams, it comes down to purely using that experience in those moments. See Brady with a one out single after the first Rebel of the day who did not. You're not seeing pitchers hit as much. I think that was a big reason as to why Elena Vodder transferred to South Carolina. That was in the conversation. I want to be that hitting pitcher. Gets her swinging. Third strikeout for Vodder. Together and just Emily Kennedy and Coach Trish Ford and Texas A&M across the board. But for LSU to go in and get the sweep, dude, it's pretty good. Diving attempt, can't get there, that's Blampede. They hold the runner at third, so it's second and third now 
with two away against Vauder. Counts. That's why you see the pitch count up a bit. Got her on the outside corner. Vauder strands a pair, her fourth strikeout. Great AB from Blankenship to lead off the fifth inning. These days just aren't fooled by just 70 miles an hour anymore. The timing that they're able to get off of pitchers like that is what it used to be back in the day for us when you face someone that's 63, 64, 65. It's comfortable velocity. It's a deep right field and off the wall. It rolls away from McKay and right. One run coming around to score. The throw to third, not in time. It's an RBI triple for Jen Cummings. Well, this had some good hang time. She goes down and gets this change up, pulls it to right field. And I thought for a second, maybe this is gonna get out of here, but just hits the bottom of the warning track. Has some good giddy up behind it. And that extra bounce off the wall is what allows Jen Cummings to get to third base so gracefully. At the top of the list. This one really well to left field. It's caught out there and left. But that'll get the job done. A sack fly for Riley Blampede. Legging out 10, 11, 12 innings on their own. But with what she's been able to do in the game, her being that fifth year senior. Good side, that gets through past De Leon. Two out base runner in the form of Zoe Leno. And with not having really any fans in the stands behind these dugouts, you're just you're hearing a lot of chatter, right? It's kind of like we said, a little eerie not being able to have any fans with this new stadium. See the bleachers out in center field. That's where all the fans are housed this season as Black is retired. He's had about as up and day, up and down of a day as you can have. The runners advance to Selithermus. She got both wins at LSU through 10 innings, gave up just eight hits and two earned. This is in the shallow right center field. De Leon takes care of it. Four not Climb the ladder with the rise ball and use the changeup a little bit more effectively. And that to me is just goes to show, hey, I don't need to throw my rise ball for the first, you know, two and a half hours of this game. Sometimes you don't need to go at a team with your best pitches all the time. You can get away with one or two and have success and then bring something in late. Nice catch in left field, Marissa Gonzalez. You can't take that one from her. First pitch swinging here for Lassiter. That's in the shallow center and caught by Ooh. Riley Blampede. And Elena Vaught. And that's why you see a lot of those 50 year seniors just have more confidence than they ever have. Because they're 22, 23 years old. They've gone through the hard in the sport already. First pitch swinging. Bree Warren is retired. Zone a little better. Near on the infield. De Leon has it, two outs. Pulling the heat up when they need to heat up, but at times you're gonna take your lumps when you step into the batter's box. It just sometimes comes with the territory. Inside corner for Cleithermus. Another 0-2, there it is. Great location from Vauder who is rolling right now with five strikeouts. Those are special, right? Those are things you check off the resume of like, hey, I was pretty lucky to be able to be a part of this. This glove work over at third, that's Leno who were. Ole Miss now three straight innings not getting their lead off on after they did so in the first few. It's gonna go down as an error on blank. Runners in scoring position entering this series. Wow. This is kind of off the end of the bat in the left field. It's caught out there by Gonzalez. To the seventh we go. They'll host Winthrop on Wednesday to start the homestand.
First pitch swinging is in fair territory, and they're going to say that's a fair ball and an out. Oh, my goodness. Scorched up the middle. Thankfully, Cleithermus able to get out of the way. That was crushed by... Ball right side, chance for two. The flip, the throw, and not in time at first. Leno keeps the inning alive. Now the four hole first pitch swinging here for Julia Desiderio, who entered at catcher last game, and that'll do it for the top of the. You know, the different pitching machines to help dial you in for, you know, a, a 70 mile an hour drop ball in the zone. You're getting the reps. So for her to be able to do what she's done so far, if Ole Miss is not able to. She entered the seventh, but couldn't finish it. So Vauder came in and closed the deal. Chance for two here, and they get it. A quick turn up the middle, and there's two away. They were swept by Tennessee in Columbia last weekend. The Volunteers tight in game one. Lost in extras, ground ball right side, that will do it. Elena Vauder with basically a perfect weekend. Didn't allow a run, Danielle. Yeah, and the fifth shutout for Ole Miss on the year. I mean, honestly, Elena Vauder, she's been a huge pickup for them. She has fit in nicely. So Time, big thanks to our crew, led by Jim Holder and David Dillard. I'm Chucky Kemp for Danielle Laurie. We send you to Georgia, Tennessee, Dave Neal and Lance Cormier.